So last week, uh, we started off with the introduction to this problem. So uh, you throw a ball. at a speed of 10 meters per second at an angle 30 degrees above the horizon. Uh, how long uh, before the ball hits the ground. And so we saw that we needed to take our speed and angle And we need to find the X and the Y components of that initial velocity. And so we saw that was Cosine theta in the x direction and sine theta in the y direction. Uh, so don't get in the habit of just assuming that the X component is always cosine and the Y component is always sine because that's not always gonna be the case. Uh, and we'll see that uh, maybe next week or the week after that. Okay, so we've got 8.66 meters per second in the X direction and then five meters per second in the J direction. So, so, so this was from this triangle where this side is 10 and this is theta. So if you want to know what the X and the Y are, uh, then you use the trig function sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, which is Y over 10. And then cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. And that's X over 10. And then if you solve this for the Y component, I guess V I Y then you get uh, what I wrote over here. Okay, so now uh, we have these components. If we look back at our problem, um, we're looking for the time. So how long is it in the air? So that's asking for time. We know, uh, since they didn't say otherwise, we just assume that we're on earth. So our acceleration in the y direction is negative 9.8 meters per second squared.
and we just found our initial x and y components using uh, trigonometry. So what I'm going to recommend everyone do when they are solving these kind of problems is the following. So make a table in both the x and the y direction. And then if we look at our kinematic equations, we've got a set in both the x and the y direction. And so now you'll see I'm putting a, a subscript of x on, each, on the velocity and the acceleration so you know which direction I'm talking about. And then the i and the f just mean initial or final. Okay, so those are the ones for the x. And here, the same thing in the y direction, just with uh, subscripts of y now. So the second equation is given to two a delta x. Is it? Oh, never mind. I'm getting that one half. Okay. Okay, so now you want to look at each of these equations and write down each variable that you see in the equation. So in the x direction, we have an acceleration, we have an initial velocity in the x, a final velocity in the x, uh, we have our delta x, and then do the same thing in the y direction. So we have acceleration in the y, the initial velocity in the y, the final velocity in the y, and delta y. And so uh, if you look at the equations, what's the only variable that I didn't, like that isn't x or have a subscript of x or y? Time. Right, so the time is what's gonna tie everything together. So you can put time kind of at the bottom of your list. And so this is going to be similar to what we did in one dimension, but now we have to do it twice, basically. So in the y direction, we said that there was acceleration due to gravity. We broke our y component, our y velocity into x and y components. So we already have that number. So y was five meters per second. Five meters per second. Uh, we don't know what the final y velocity is, so you can just leave that blank or put a question mark. And now delta y, so we haven't really talked about that. So if we look at our problem, um, unless they say that you start from a certain height and end at a certain height, uh, you can just assume that you're starting and ending from the same height. So in this problem, delta y is going to be zero. because this is y final minus y initial. And if your final and your initial are the same number, then you get delta y equals zero. Okay, so we'll put that here. We don't, uh, so what about the acceleration in the x direction? Uh, for these projectile problems, it's usually gonna be zero meters per second squared. Uh, so when we start talking about forces, uh, we'll have a better understanding of why this is zero, but uh, 
basically there's no force acting in the x direction so there's nothing that's causing the object to change its velocity in the x direction okay we said we broke our initial velocity into components so we got 8.66 meters per second for the x component of our initial uh, velocity what about the final velocity in x uh, what do you guys think that's going to be Uh, so if you look at your initial velocity and your acceleration, if my initial velocity is 8.66 and I have no acceleration in that direction, is that velocity going to change? Mm -hmm. Right. So this is also 8.66. And now delta x, we don't know what that is. And we also don't know what the time is, but that's what the problem asked us to solve here. So looking at this list of variables, uh, your first decision is, do I wanna pick to work in the Y direction first or the X direction first? So if we're looking for time, trying to solve time, uh, look at your list of variables and then look at your equations and uh, decide which equation you want to do. Maybe I'll label the x, one, two, and three, and then the y will be four, five, and six. So I'll let you guys think about that for a minute or so and decide which equation you want to use to find the time. So that's, uh, it's gonna turn out that you don't need the final velocity to figure this one out. So if you look at equation six, uh, if you, you see delta y is zero. So if we, we're gonna choose this equation and then because delta y is zero, so, So this is going to zero. So I can move the B initial Y T to the other side. And now I have a T and a T squared. So I can cancel this square with this T. And so now it's only linear in time. And if we're solving for this leftover T, we would divide both sides by one half a, so negative two v initial y over a y equals t. And then if you plug in your numbers, this is two times uh, the initial y we said was five. and then divide that by your negative 9.8. So you see your negative signs are gonna cancel. This is 10 divided by 9.8. So that's like one point something. I'll just say one second. And so that's how we would find the time for this. Now, the, pro the initial problem could have read uh, how far away will this object land? So this said, how long before the ball hits the ground? It could have said, uh, how far away will the object land? And so if we look back at our table, now we would be asking for delta x. And so let's pretend that we hadn't just calculated for the time. Uh, is there any way to find delta x uh, 
just with what's given on the x side of the equation. Yeah, so if you try to use the second equation though, your acceleration in the x is zero. So you would have a true statement that v final x squared equals v initial x squared, but it doesn't give you a way to solve for delta x. And so then the only equation that's left is number three, but you need to have the time to find uh, delta x using that equation. So even though, again, pretending this problem asked for how far away will the object land instead of asking for how long it's gonna be in the air. So even though it's asking for delta x, we need to use the y direction to find the time and then plug that time into the x direction equation. So that's gonna happen a lot uh, for these kind of projectile motion problems where you'll have to use one direction to solve for one of your variables and then be able to plug that into the other direction. And that's usually gonna be the time. So you'll, you'll solve for time in one direction and then plug it into the other uh, direction. So let's do that. Okay, so we found this time was about one second. Maybe I'll actually type it in. 10 divided by 1.02. Okay, so if we want, uh, we wanted delta x, so we said we were going to use this equation. So delta x equals v initial x t plus one half a x t squared. The acceleration in the x direction is zero. So delta x equals v initial x times t. The initial x was 8.66. The time was 1.02. So when you multiply those together, you get delta x. And that is 8.83, I guess 8.84 meters. And so I'm being kind of lazy with my units, but uh, if you look at the units for this thing, uh, the velocity units are meters per second. The time unit is seconds. So you're, when you multiply those units together, your seconds cancel and you're left with meters. So any questions about that problem? Uh, let's look at a another example, one where we don't, uh, so this one was maybe a little easy because we started and ended at the same height, uh, but let's do another example where we don't start and end at the same height. And we'll see how the math changes uh, in that case. So let's say, that you're standing on top of a building. And now you throw your ball. Uh, let's say that you throw it straight horizontally. So your initial velocity is, let's say, 20 meters per second. And the angle is zero with respect to the, the horizontal. And again, we wanna know, uh, how far away this thing is gonna land. And we, Let's say that the height of this building is 10 meters. Okay. 
and we want to find this delta x. So let's make our table of all of our variables in the x and the y direction. Okay, so again, our uh, acceleration on the X is gonna be zero. Acceleration due to gravity in the Y direction, so negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Our, what is gonna be the X component of our initial velocity? So what is the X component of the initial velocity? Yeah, 20. And so if that's 20, what is the initial component in the Y direction? It would be zero because we're launching it horizontally. So all of our initial velocities is in the X direction. What's gonna be our final velocity in the X? 20. Delta X is what we're solving for. Do we know what the final velocity in the Y is gonna be? No. And then what about Delta Y? Yep. Uh, so the acceleration in the X is zero. So if you look at this equation, if I set x or the acceleration in the x equal to zero, then my final velocity in the x has to equal my initial velocity in the x. Yeah. So what about our delta y? So this is final minus initial. So well, we are given the height of the building, right? So it would be uh, negative 10. As we're starting, our y initial is 10. Our y final is 0. So y final minus y initial is 0 minus 10. So that's your negative 10 meters. And then we don't know what the time is either. Okay, so maybe I'll write the kinematic equations down at the bottom, I guess. Okay, and then there's, of course, the ones in the y direction as well. And like on your homework and stuff, it might be good to just like have your kinematic equations to be looking at all the time. So you don't have to keep writing it over and over again like this. Okay, so.
so uh, given our what we know from the problem and uh, we're trying to find delta x, can we find delta x just using the stuff in the x direction? Yeah, so we're going to need to go into the y direction to find the time. So in that case, uh, which y equation uh, are we going to need to use? The last one, okay. So delta y equals b initial y t plus one half a y t squared. Okay, so the initial velocity in the y is zero, so that goes away. We're solving for time, so we can divide both sides by one half a, and that would give us two delta y over a y equals t squared. And then you can take the square root of both sides to solve for t. And plugging that in, we get two times negative 10 over negative 9.8. So that's going to be 20 divided by 9.8, which is 2 point something, 2.04. And then take the square root of that. One point four three seconds. Okay, so now we have that time. We can uh, come back here and fill in this time one point four three. And then which equation in the x direction are we going to use to find delta x? The third one again. So oops. delta x equals v initial x t plus one half a x t squared. Our delta x is zero. Or not delta x, sorry. Our acceleration in the x is zero. So we cross that out. And then solving for delta x, it's already by itself. So we can just plug in our numbers. So the initial value of velocity in the x was 20 meters per second. The time we found was 1.43 seconds. And if you multiply those two things together, you get 20.8 or 28.57 meters. Okay, so this problem was asking how far away this thing is going to land. So if we look back at our picture from the base of the building to where it lands, that distance is the 28.57. So let's look at a kind of conceptual idea. So let's take that, oops, take that problem that we just did and we shot a, or threw something 20 meters per second in the X direction and it landed 28.57 meters away. Now, if we compare the flight time or just the time here, and if we were on that same 
a 10 meter tall building. And we instead just dropped the ball from rest. So our initial velocity in both directions was zero. How are those two times going to compare? Dropping it will be quicker. Okay, so we have some people say dropping it'll be quicker. Uh, does anyone think that the throwing it horizontally will be quicker? No. Does anyone think that they would be the same time? No, no one thinks that. Okay, so this is why I wanted to cover this. So these times are going to be the same. Uh, so what did I say this time was? 2.04 seconds? Oh, 1.43. Okay, sorry. And so the reason for this is that uh, if we look at our little list of variables. So if you look at the ones in the y direction, that's what we use to find the time, right? So if you look at our initial velocity in the x, that was zero meters per second, right? What is the what's the initial velocity if we just drop the ball? in the y, also zero. So because the initial velocity in the y is zero in both of these cases, the flight time is going to be the same. Now, obviously, the distance traveled is different, the total distance traveled, because uh, this one has your uh, so if you wanted the total distance that this one traveled, you would have your uh, 10 meters squared plus 2.8 or 28.57 squared under a square root for the total distance or the total displacement, I guess. Whereas this one's total displacement would only be the 10 meters. But because the y direction is the one that has the acceleration, that's the one that's governing the time that it's going to take to go from whatever height it's at to reach the ground. And so this will make a bit more sense conceptually when we talk about forces uh, in the next week or so. Uh, but this is, even without that, understanding if you just look at the equations then you should be able to tell that these two times will be the same because both have the same initial velocity in the y direction okay so let's keep working on this problem so uh, we found the time so far we found the delta x that this is traveled. So the only thing that we haven't solved for is the final velocity in the y direction. So let's do that. Um, so given these variables in the y, uh, what, which equation do you guys want to use to find the final velocity in the y? Number one, yeah, that's we could use that one. We could also use number two. Um, but yeah, number one's going to be the easiest one or the first one in the y direction. Okay, so B final y equals B initial y 
plus a y t the so we're solving for final velocity so it's already by itself the initial velocity in the y was zero and the acceleration in the y is negative 9.8 we found the time was 1.43 Maybe I'll write down the units. So this is meters per second squared times the time, which was 1.43 seconds. So when you multiply those two things together, you get 14.01. And then the units on that will be, so your, if you multiply seconds times one over seconds squared, then uh, one of the seconds on the bottom cancels and you're left with meters per second. And this is negative. And so you'll remember that our final velocity in the X was 20 because that's, the velocity in the X that we started with. So if you wanted to write your final velocity as a vector, you would write it as 20 I hat plus negative 14.01 J hat. And the units on that would be meters per second. So do you guys remember if we change uh, from this vector notation and find the magnitude of this? So remember a vector is just, uh, let's see. So this was 20 I hat and 14.01 J hat. Right, so we have to use the Pythagorean theorem. So if you remember these components for your vectors are just uh, arrows like this. So this was 20 and then this was 14. And to find the magnitude of this, you're just finding this longer side of the triangle, which is your hypotenuse. And so using Pythagorean theorem, uh, you can get your final velocity or the this magnitude of your final velocity as square root of 20 squared plus, and it's negative 14 squared, but the, the negative sign is going to go away when you square it. And so your final speed is twenty four point four two meters per second. So this is either the magnitude of your final velocity or your speed. And then like someone was saying, uh, we can, oh, I guess I didn't draw this triangle very, let's see. So the triangle should have looked like this because the 14 has a negative sign in front of it. So it should be pointing down. So we found this side of the triangle. And now if you wanted to find this angle theta, um, that's when we would use the tangent of, or the inverse tangent of these two sides. So uh, 
tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. So if this was our angle theta, then so opposite side is 14 or negative 14. And the adjacent side is 20. So if you want to solve for the theta, you would take the inverse tangent of those two. And if you plug that into your calculator, you would get negative 35 degrees. And so that negative sign is just telling you that you're below this x-axis, which is how I, how I drew it. And so now we have two different ways of representing this vector. We can either write it in component form like this, or we can write it as a combination of the magnitude of the velocity and an angle. So this problem could have been worded differently. It could have said, find the angle of the impact or something like that. And then you would have to basically do all of the work that we just did to find this angle of 35 degrees. So there's a lot of different ways that you can ask these kinds of questions. And there's a lot of different initial conditions that you can be given, uh, but it's all the same framework. You just write down, uh, maybe this one looks prettier. You have all of your equations in front of you for both the X and the Y direction. You write down all the things that are given to you in the problem, and then you pick uh, the equations you want to use to solve those problems. So 